thank you all for joining Dragon Con's alternate and historical fiction track. We are here with Horror and Clay and the cocktail historian, and they are going to walk us through the history of the Navy Grog. So y'all enjoy. All right. Well, um, to get started with, you cannot have grog rum, and you cannot have rum without sugar. So let's talk a little bit about the history of sugar. Uh, as far as we know, uh, Papua New Guinea is the origin of domesticated sugar, about 4,000 BC. Uh, um, and since it only basically came from that one place, uh, it was uh, it was very expensive at the time. Well, nobody cared at the time. <laughs> but uh, the, the British definitely took a, a liking to it. And so the wealthy uh, were very interested in, in taking that sugar and putting it everywhere they could. So um, we saw it move to uh, India, to the Mediterranean, um, then to the colonial Atlantic islands off Africa. Uh, and then eventually it came over to our side of the Atlantic. Um, 1493 on Columbus's second trip, he brought um, little sugar cane plants with him, took them to Barbados and other islands. Um, so that's how sugar got everywhere. Uh, and now of course, as they planted more and more of that, um, the price went down and, and other people, you know, mark, market uh, forces came into play. Yeah. Um, and then everybody could have it. <laughs> but uh, it was a, a cash cow uh, for a very long time. Um, the uh, downside of, of all of that was uh, about a third of it went completely to waste uh, through the, the uh, production process. Um, so, uh, yeah, what was left after, after uh, refining your sugar was molasses. Um, and that, yeah, it's basically industrial waste. Um, on the bright side, uh, as far as we know, uh, Barbados found something useful to do with that, which is to ferment it and then distill it. So we're going to talk about all the fun things that you can do with your favorite industrial waste. Exactly. Uh, which are a lot of fun things. I, I pretty much like it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Cliff. Yeah. Um, are you feeling groggy? Oh, I love grog. I but, also, but you know, we, we got to get there. Oh right. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I think we should invite people just now, since we're mm -hmm. getting started, that if they have a bottle of rum, kind of rum, particularly and, strong rum, what should they do with that if they're feeling groggy? Oh, I, I don't know if they should uh, make the first drug. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I think no, but I think given this, but, but we'll room, demonstrate. Yeah. <laughs> and you can follow along at home if you'd like. Okay. Well. Uh, to, to get, you know, um, what, one uh, misnomer about grog is that uh, pirates yelling for their grog and saying other stupid things like yar, uh, yo ho ho in a bottle of rum, yar, wearing a parrot on your shoulder. Well, all that stuff is nonsense. That is uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> it's actually from a film version of Pirate of Island from 1954, <laughs> wherein uh, every pirate before then um, uh, had a, a British accent, um, but for the 54 version, uh, the actor whose name is escaping me, but I think I've got it written down somewhere. Uh, Robert Newton. Robert Newton. Our... Every time you think of a pirate, what you're actually thinking is Robert Newton's uh, wet one's uh, English accent. Uh, he played uh, Long John Silver, mm -hmm. and all of the he are and me hearties and he here are. That was just <laughs> the folks that he grew up with that were uh, uh, shipmen. So, uh, yeah, um, the, the author was writing this story for his kids, and, and they were really bored by re reasonable things like facts and truth. Um, so he just cut out everything that wasn't uh, just washbuckling for the most part. And thus we have our modern concept of what a pirate is. Uh, Which we love. They, we look forward to seeing you all at Dragon Con. They, they did drink rum. They, they did. did not drink grog. Grog comes later. So, uh, yeah, but between uh, 10 years of 1716, 1726, Basically, all the pirates were hanged. Uh, like four, four to six hundred pirates were being killed during that time, um, <laughs> and uh, we we didn't really see grog until uh, the forty. So another fourteen years after that, um, but we were okay. So uh, before, okay. Uh, so uh, Navy strength rum, right? So we were talking about. Why, why, would, why is rum so uh, indelibly linked with uh, the British Navy, with shipmen in general, pirates? Uh, it is because the water that they, were, uh, they had to carry with them a long way, and it came from the cleanest source of water you could get in England, the, the Thames. Thames. 
raise your hand if you live downstream from a city. Uh, you want to go drink the hooch? No. no. <laughs> um, so the water, uh, the water would would get brackish and slimy uh, a couple weeks out of uh, out of port. It, it was uh, not healthy. It they would that. drink beer because it was healthier to drink than uh, than the water. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, eventually, after the, the rise of sugar and after um, Barbados um, started spreading the wealth and being exported and whatever, they realized that rum doesn't go bad. And strangely enough, the longer you leave it in its casks, the, uh, the better it gets. So, you know, the water is getting worse, but the rum is getting better. Yeah, and, and the, the aging was really just by accident because you had to throw it in that, that barrel to ship it across the ocean and back home to England or wherever. Um, <laughs> your favorite uh, term for rum might be navy proof. The term navy proof? I don't like the term navy proof. I don't like the term I, navy proof either. I think that's nonsense. It um, is. Because it's marketing from 1990. Yeah. <laughs> what you would be looking for would be gunpowder proof. Gunpowder proof. Because the pussers, when they were purchasing the rum, mm. would how to go exactly? They're mixing the gunpowder with the rum. Oh, yeah. You, you take a few grains of gunpowder and you mix that with rum and then you try to light it on fire. And if there was too much water in your rum, then your potassium nitrate would just dissipate and would no longer explode. So if it ignites, then your rum is strong enough for the Navy. <laughs> um, and that's where you get proof and overproof rum. And also, if you see like a you know magic effect when somebody goes like that, and it goes poof, and it's got sparks in it also, replicated in modern tiki bars with cinnamon. Well, yeah, cinnamon. That's what yeah. it looked like when the gunpowder went off. <laughs> okay, I didn't, I didn't ever. That's pretty awesome. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So we need to get around to Jamaica eventually. Oh yeah. Um, so because uh, Bar Barbados did invent rum, as far as we know, yeah. um, and they really liked the flavor of just a single distillation. Um, eventually, well, Jamaica would double distill theirs, making it stronger uh, in in every way, and also easier to ship, um, which was very important for everybody who was producing this stuff. Uh, so 1655, the uh, British Navy. By accident, because they went to go. Uh, well, it, I think it was. They were like, "We're going to go take." They were like, "Oh wait, there's lots of people there." And they were, "No, we're going to go over here. You guys are defenseless. We're going to take Jamaica." Yes, and then they switched to rum. <laughs> Not only stronger, easier to carry, but that, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Um, oh yes. There. Everybody had it. Uh, they could not drink the water. We covered that. Uh, let's talk about how much they drank. Uh, in 1731, we, we found some regulations. That were, they finally rolled out some regulations. That is the first time it was codified how much. And what, what you, your ration was uh, daily was one gallon of small beer, which is a, a, is weaker. Or, it's, it's like making beer. With, it's like making decaf coffee, where you take the stuff that was used to make beer, and then you make beer again. Like the leaves. But it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> small beer. Small beer. To don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, or your half pint of rum, and that's an imperial pint. They are slightly larger than the, the American measure these days. So that's two gill uh, nine. or 9.6 US fluid ounces in, in a day. And they generally drank it all at once as soon as the, the purser handed it out. You weren't allowed to take it back <laughs> above decks because you right. might spill your rum above decks. Or, or you could store it and you know th then have way too much all at once. <laughs> my, my two rations. Yes, because. Because that would 20 be, ounces of rum at once is that would be reasonable. What we're about to do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're not. We, we, we've uh, we've cut it down to a reasonable number. Um, you lied badly. <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, old Grogham. Yes. Well, the man poor, known as poor Vice Admiral Edward Vernon, uh, old Grogram, G R O G R A M. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I there's no spell. H there. It's an R. Uh, not what you think. Uh, well, this guy uh, was fighting the War of Jenkins' Ear with Spain in 1739. Um, and he noticed that all of his soldiers were drunk, so drunk all the time. On rum! On, yeah, on rum. So he, he decided to do a solution. He, uh, they, they got the same ration. 9.6 ounces. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, cut four to one with water. And at this point, you're killing the germs in that water. So it's... Uh, yeah. You know. So remember that slimy water you don't want to drink alone because it came from the <laughs> Thames, which is downriver of the city of Piss? <laughs> yeah. Same water, you're now mixing four, four to one. Um. <laughs> All right, we're second. Uh, so uh, we've got, oh, right, also, sheesh, 
Um, you got that twice a day all of a sudden instead of just all at once. Uh, that's generally between 10 to noon or like 4 to 6 is when they would roll that out. So lunch and tea time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and every time you received this, this ration, um, that was uh, 24 ounces of beverage twice a day. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not cut down at all. It's just weaker and you get a little hydration at the same time. <laughs> so we have our first drink. Uh, I pre-mixed it. This is this is four to one uh, with with a Navy strength, gear proof Navy strength, Navy strength. and uh, and we'll, we'll talk about pussers. We I, I guess we should keep going for. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Why why do we have pussers rum and why is that gunpowder proof? I don't know. So take whatever rum you have handy, mix it parts of your favorite water, hopefully not from the Thames. <laughs> and and do we have grog? And well, there's grog right there. We have grog. grog. So take a sip of your grog, but you notice it's, it's a not. Um, where is that? Uh, it's not quite a. Well, this is not 24 ounces. So so we're we're nowhere near that. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. So okay. you've mixed your your one part of rum to your four parts of water. But yeah. what is uh, what is take uh, incapacitating more sailors than than getting killed by pirates or it being in battle? It's scurvy. It's scurvy. Nobody yeah. wants scurvy. Nobody wants. Scurvy. Gosh, uh, they, they kind of figured out that if, if you ate limes or lemons with your rum, uh, you didn't get scurvy, which is really nice. <laughs> so, uh, 55, uh, 15 years after the dilute rolled out, uh, the Navy gave you half a manure lime juice every day, and that was enough to ward off scurvy. Because at first they knew it was a half ounce of citrus, citrus. okay? Yep. But usually, and I found this out just today. So I'm doing a splash. So... You, you've got your half ounce of citrus, <laughs> but it officially became, and that was 1755. In 1705, mm -hmm. um, they said it needed to be lemon. And the reason was because, you know, nascent sciences and everything, they finally found out that lemon was, had more vitamin C. It's got four times as much mm -hmm. vitamin C. Okay. That was in 1975. All the lemons, 1795. Yep. All the lemons came from Europe. In 1779, with French in the Treaty of Aranjuez. Oh boy. <laughs> they couldn't get European lemons anymore. So they switched to limes. And that's from, from the West Indies. That's what we call the British limeys. limeys. <laughs> All right. Thank you, West Indies. And I, I do prefer limes myself. So, I'm so okay with that. it's well, 1779. <laughs> we've added our lime to our grog, our one part rum to four parts water. We're doing this so you don't have to. I Indeed. hope you're following along at home. And cheers. Have some grog. Yeah, we're not drinking this all. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow, it's watered down. Only grog. the finest of meltwater. <laughs> With a hint of lime. A hint of lime. Just just a tiny taste. A tiny taste of lime. Irish. I don't know. It's not West no, no. at all. Well, they're, they're sort of British. Um, <laughs> so, we Whoa. talked about the first dilution order. Now it's 1823. Okay, what happened in 1823? Where are we? The second dilution order. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the rum ration. Your whole ration. You only got four ounces a day. Those bastards. 9.6 ounces. They gosh. killed Kenny. Uh, yeah, boy. And, and then at some point, they cut it one more time. That's not and good. Then, I don't know what date that was, but it was before uh, yeah. 1850. <laughs> All right. Where? Okay, so uh, 1850, uh, we have the rum ration, the tot. Uh, from then to 1970, that's a good 120 years, mm -hmm. your, your ration was one-eighth of an imperial pint, 71 mils or 2.4 U.S. fluid ounces. So they've cut you down from 10 ounces <laughs> served at one time a day to yes. a half ounces served twice a day, diluted across to it. Right. <laughs> All right. And it was 95.5 proof. Right. It's gunpowder proof. Gunpowder proof. <laughs> and you got that for lunch. It's at noon, midday. <laughs> Uh, Breakfast of lunch, no, lunch of champions. So 1970 rolls around, July 31st. Uh, they decide they're going to bring out rum to their sailors. Tot day. It's Very coming sad. up on July. Oh, well, this, might want, this won't air it, first. But July 31st is Black Tot Day. Sorry you missed it. And it was a rolling <laughs> phase out at noon in each time zone of the United uh, of, the, of the world. They would, uh, they, some some of them had. Uh, Every hour. Yep. Or hour. sometimes half hour. They had mock funerals. They had like uh, rum dying in effigy. They buried barrels on islands. And <laughs> dude was like, hey, hey, you know, you get rid of that stuff? Let me buy some of that. Let me buy all of that. 
<laughs> so you can still buy it. It's so, stupid expensive. Charles Tobias. <clears throat> you, so yeah, yeah. You, you can you can buy the original uh, black tie uh, because it, it's still barely around. Uh, but but then yeah, 1980, ten years later, they the uh, Navy released the recipe to Charles Tobias, and he took that and created Busser's Gunpowder Proof. So here's the Busser's. Busser's is uh, slang for pursers. The purser who we had in the first wrong. place. Um, we have a couple other Navy proof rums, just for example. Navy strength rum. Sorry about that. Uh, there's a Hamilton and uh, also Smith and Cross, which many of us know and love from Jamaica. Smith and Cross is the one to really like track down and learn to love because it's got a whole bunch of the flavor of, of Jamaican. Mm -hmm. But if you want the history and the original recipe, go with Buzzers. Yep. For Navy, for sure. While we move on to the second thing, I forgot something slightly earlier. Ben Franklin. Uh, Printed more than 200 synonyms for drunk uh, in, in one of his publications. Here are some of my favorite, because I know we've got a bunch of word nerds in the audience. Cocked. Juicy. <laughs> fuzzled. Womble cropped. Crump footed. Staggerish. And the most salient. Bend of Barbados. <laughs> so I, I uh, seen many of y'all at Dragon Con done been to Bar Barbados. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, did, did we? Yeah, we didn't cover. Oh, where? What? Well, we covered that. The old grog. Well, people didn't oh, yeah. didn't like old grog. That was actually a, a, yeah. a mean thing to, to say to him. Although Edward Vernon is the genesis of the name of Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Washington's brother named Mount Vernon after him, uh, and then just kept the name when he moved in. Oh. Uh, so, uh, also rum, the word rum, uh, like, what, why don't we, it used to be called kill devil, like, uh, which is both, uh, it, you can take it two ways. It, it'll kill the devil in you, but, but I think most likely it was the other way around. It, is, it came from the devil, uh, and it'll kill you. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the, we, we don't call it that. We call it rum now, um, which we think either came from saccharum, the name for, for sugar, saccharum officinarum, or rumbullion or rumbustion, which basically means loud and obnoxious. <laughs> uh, good question, which, which one might actually be true, and maybe neither. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think we went through the prehistory of grog. All right. We so, get, grog, we had some OG grog right there. You'll uh, notice it's still sitting right there. Yeah, good old 1740 OG grog. Let's move on to Don Beach. Okay. Those of you who have uh, done any studying in the cocktail space in the tiki bar will realize uh, uh, there, uh, there are two guys that you always think about. Victor Bergeron, Trader Vicks, and uh, Ernest Beaumont Gant. Gant? Gant. Gant. G-A-N-T-T. -T. Don uh, the Beachcomber. Yeah. Um, Ernest Gant opened the restaurant, um, Don the Beachcomber, and eventually people just assumed his name. So, so he changed his it. name <laughs> to Don Beach. <laughs> with Don with two ends instead of one. Instead of one. Yep. <laughs> so he, he legally changed it. And, All right. And there you go. So, so go ahead. Well, of the two of them, Don was the innovator. Like he was, he had her palette. Not that, that Victor had a bad one, but Don Beach had a ace's palette and loved to experiment and tinker and whatever. So, you know, heavy into the marketing of this stuff in 1937, he came up with. Don's own grog, uh, obviously a tribute to the original grog, but very different, uh, much, much more palatable. So we're going to get into that. Can you hand me the uh, top of the blender, please? Yes. And I'm just going to run through our list. I might give you the rest of it. <laughs> the useful part. Thank you, sir. Sorry, I should have been more clear there. All right. No, nah, that was me. Sorry. So, so here we go. Uh, we're going to start. Um, we've got everything in, in our mise en place, so we, we won't waste too much of your time here. Uh, one half ounce of lime. In. A quarter ounce blackberry brandy. A quarter ounce full syrup. This is one to one sugar syrup. And uh, we are making doubles here, so everything is uh, is larger. You can just ignore that. Uh, one ounce of gold Jamaican. So here we have hot dog gold. Thank you, Ed Hamilton, for bringing us these wonderful rooms. <laughs> and one half ounce of dark Jamaican. We have the same thing, but with more molasses in it. Pot still black. black. All right. And one half ounce 
used to be Louisiana Rums Pontalba. Uh, they went out of business. Um, but so our best guess is uh, in, in Agricole, uh, which is more grassy um, than the pot stills and everything like everything else, really. <laughs> We've got here's a Clement BSOP. It should be pretty good. Um, Louisiana Distillery did start up again. Uh, I understand there, there's a New Orleans names rum that, that is a, a pretty good approximation of the original. Ooh. Um, okay, okay. one dash Angostura bitters. That's almost a dash. It's two, right? Yeah, Certainly. sure. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll throw that on top. Oh. And now we have uh, six drops or one eighth of a teaspoon of grenadine. I uh, don't use roses grenadine. It's awful. It should not exist. Uh, this is real stuff made from pomegranate or palm cooked down in just the right way. Plenty of recipes on the internet for that. Uh, Alton Brown's got one. So there's that. Uh, there's so even a guide to syrups on harandclay.com that Cliff helped me uh, nine years ago. Boy, some time has passed. Indeed. Oh, right. Need a scoop full of this. And now, now we need one, one cup of crushed ice. Or one cup of ice. Yeah, and then a couple of lovely pebble stuff. That yeah, looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's probably a little heavy, but yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a cup. All right, sure. so let's make it loud. We are going to blend on high for five seconds. How's it going? Uh, a little more than that. A little more? Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, and we're gonna put that in an old fashioned glass. And we need some more crushed ice to fill. Pebble okay? Or you want me to crush ice? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, let's, let's do pebble. Pebble is a very good approximation of crushed ice. It has all the, the surface area that you want to play with. And yeah, that much again is just fine. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have our nutmeg. Don't eat too much nutmeg. <laughs> and there we go. Don's on grog. Don's on grog. Absolutely. You love this game like Cliff does. You actually track down a double rocks glass straight sided and said <laughs> for this age of drink. That's true. I, I brought it on purpose. That's way better than that. This is very delicious. Well, for sure. The blackberry right. on the back end is nice. Yeah, uh, it's not overwhelming at all. It's just a quarter ounce for a drink. So. Wow. All right, work out well. Well, should we go into a espionage? Mm -hmm. so, you mean Trader Vic? So, 1937, Donzo's <laughs> own grog. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, on the success of this drink, uh, Don was like, well, uh, if I can sell it to him once, I can sell it to him again with slightly different. Uh, actually, this one's a lot different. Uh, yes. Okay. So, we're not at Vic yet. We're, we're at uh, the, the what's become known as Navy Grog. Uh, th this is a, a solid. Reliable one. Okay, and fun. They sold it to us again, and it's a, it's very different. Um, um, this, this has hints of blackberry and a little bit of back with the egg. Mm -hmm. also an awkward uh, grittiness to it. But you know, it's not make. It's not make. <laughs> I like. It. Yeah. Watch that. Yeah. <laughs> While we make this. All right. Maybe that's right. reasonable. Uh, you want to vamp a little bit on uh, on you know. Yeah, sure. Some, some Frank Sinatra, <laughs> and who loved this grog? Lots of people love this, Greg. Uh, uh, well, uh, Vix is the one that we're going to get to next. Okay. Um, but, it, oh, no, I, I know why well, you want to do this. We're going to sure. talk for a moment about garnishing. So this, oh. garnish with a swizzle stick, mm -hmm. right? Nothing. Now, the really cool thing about a Navy Grog is because, uh, like we said, Don was a, a showman, not as much as Vic, but big. And he uh, garnished with ice. So he had a couple of drinks. One of them has an ice cone. And it is this, which really is said to look like a volcano. 
Uh, it's actually a great big chunk of ice to help uh, the, the drink uh, dilute slowly, but it makes it so you can sip it more. Um, I'll get into this little guy in a minute. Uh, you want me to put it in the cones first, and then you can add this on top, or you're, you're going to mix? Uh, let, let me go ahead and put the drink together. All right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the cones can go in now. You want to sneak on me? And sure. Okay. Just for you. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right. So uh, in the it's, it's pretty simple. Um, we've got uh, three-quarter ounce of lime. Sorry to make you measure three-quarter ounces, but at least it's not an eighth. Uh, three-quarter ounce of white grapefruit juice. That one for last. Um, one ounce of honey mix. This is this is one to one honey mix. So um, one part water, one one part honey. This is something that uh, Don Beach actually invented because boy, if you try to put honey in the ice and stir that up, you're gonna get a big glob of honey. So uh, just just take your saucepan and and you know heat it up until it all merges together, just like you do a sugar syrup. Or one ounce of honey mix. And uh, one ounce of light Puerto Rican rum. I thank you. One ounce of dark Jamaican. We're back to the Hamilton Pasto Black. And one ounce of Demerara. This is an El Dorado. Hint. There it is. El Dorado. Good stuff. All right. And all right. Demerara. There is one left. Okay. Mm. There we go. That's the one. That's, that's our fizzy water. No. We're gonna say, we're gonna not shake with the fizzy water. Uh, <laughs> okay, I would like some ice cubes. Okay. In this case, we're shaking vigorously with ice cubes. That should. Sir. All right. I'm just gonna do a twelve count. All right, put strained into the ice cone. Did we talk about the ice cone yet? Nope, we're just about to. We're gonna talk about the ice cone. All right, I love talking about the ice cone. Ice garnishes are cool. Um, so like I said, the, uh, the ice garnish, the ice cone um, he would have made it back in the day by packing crushed ice into a Pilsner glass, a long, tall, narrow glass. <clears throat> um, probably would have frozen a uh, uh, straw inside, um, topped with fizzy. That is a uh, club soda. Sorry, that is seltzer. That is not club soda. Club soda has minerals added to it for flavor. So we're, we're going with straight up gas and water. So we've, we've talked about, uh, uh, have we mentioned Jeff Berry yet? Not yet. Jeff Berry is a cocktail store historian uh, and part of why we know some of these uh, really exotic tiki drinks because Don Beach and Trader Vic's uh, wrote their stuff in code and from each other what they were doing. Like they went so far as to have ingredients pre-mixed at the apothecary down the street. They had like bottles that just came in and said, Don's mix mm -hmm. or... I don't know, whatever. Uh, uh, Don Spice is number two. Oh, Don Spice is number two. Uh, Mariana's mix, number seven. There you go. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, they were all up in each other's business, stealing things back and forth, poaching pretenders, poaching each other, trying to... Well, Jeff Berry uh, went and tracked these guys down. Um, he decoded the bar notebooks that he could get, because he'd get this guy's and this other guy's from later and this other guy's. Be like, okay, this says A plus B, and I know that A is Don the mix number two, and this, and I know that's code for cinnamon syrup. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot why I went down that rabbit hole. Oh, okay, so uh, back in the day, uh, Don would have had his bartenders uh, crush up a bunch of ice and pack it into a Pilsner glass, and then take a chopstick and stick it down the middle, uh, and then uh, let that freeze up and uh, bring them out. And they'd make hundreds of these at a time. It was apparently just... a a whole part of the, the back of the house was just people doing ice garnishes. Um, but we don't have to do that. Uh, and it's really hard to find that shape of Pilsner glass. Mm -hmm. I, I, find I, I have a difficult time finding it. Um, so. But Jeff Berry uh, worked with a company called Cocktail Kingdom to make a steel uh, ice cone garnish set. Now, uh, the cone is great. The, the little uh, paddle, um, you're supposed to fill this thing up and then put the paddle in the middle to get the channel. That's really hard to do once you've got a, a very uh, well-packed uh, cone of ice at that, that time. So 
I don't even bother. I generally don't even use the pedal. Uh, you can and, and do it that way. Yep. But or you can just use a metal straw. It's it's the right size. And I uh, so that's exactly what I do is I cram the metal straw through the bottom, pack it around that so it's already in place. Uh, Jonathan just suggested using a uh, shot glass. Well, I I'll put it in a, a chimney glass or another glass. Set this there. Pack the uh, pack a shot glass to pack it about half full, and mm -hmm. then stick the metal straw in so it stays straight up and down and just sits okay. there. It's not too difficult to get straight through the bottom part of that. Um, mm -hmm. Although um, the problem that I have that I bet you do not is like if there's an unground piece of glass uh, piece of ice that'll mm -hmm. get down and, and oh, fill that well, up well, in the neck. Yeah, you really have to make snow with the ice in your blender. Yeah, shoot shoot for snow. Oh, that, yeah. that's your best snow. Color. Always keep a <laughs> uh, another Tupperware container and blend the stuff up. Put it out of the blender into that, and then pull out any chunks, and then use the thing as a scoop to start. That's how I get my half full to start. Should we try okay. these? Uh, or lastly, when you're when you've made it, uh, you're, you're with your one device that you've got. Obviously, you're going to use this over and over again. Uh, pull out the metal, throw in a plastic one, and put that in your freezer. Yeah, that's just yeah. Good for later. Uh, so here we have our name with our lovely ice cones. Fantastic. Yep. This is the drink I want to drink when I'm having an AV grad. Yep. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Those of you at Dragon Con mm -hmm. uh, who are, have been there a time or two, I'm sure have checked out Trader Vic's and you've known excels in Navy Grog. Now, a minute about the uh, air of industrial espionage between uh, Don Beach and Trader Vic. Um, so. Uh, what would happen is 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 Vic would sneak into different Don Beach things or send other people in or poach bartenders and try and approximate the taste of things. So uh, 19, what was the, the year? We, we, just, we, we didn't know it's the 40s. Uh, so yeah, before that, we had 1937. So yeah, a so few years later. Seven. Oh, sorry, oh, I got 40. 41. Yeah. Okay. Both uh, of them, early 1940s. First Don's, 1937. 1941, he rolled up the Navy Grog, which we know and love. And then sometime in the 40s, Vic we tried to make his version. Uh, and it's really very close. It is, it is very really, similar. really close. And what's super weird about it is it has different ingredients. And so it's still very. In this case, there is no fizzy water and there is no honey mix. And he has replaced those with demerara syrup, um, which is a mixture of demerara sugar and white sugar uh, and also pimento dram. Yeah. And uh, strangely with, enough, sub pimento dram dons. Uh, this is number two. Fantastic. Uh, it's not this, but it's got that same kind of like Mai Tai esque, like spice forward taste. Uh huh. Let's go ahead and build this one. Half, three quarter ounces of lime juice, three white grapefruit juice. Uh, this is hard to source in Georgia. We, we forgot to cover this. Uh, it is on the shelf at stable uh, at Target, um, or, and you can order it on Amazon, although I've had some stuff trying to get the ocean spray cans actually come to my house. All right, three quarter ounces of that. He says we forgot. What he means is we saved it for now. Uh huh. One quarter ounce of uh, demerara syrup. One quarter ounce of pimento dram. Uh, this is also called allspice dram. Um, we see St. Elizabeth's allspice dram all the time. Yep. Um, but uh, we if, use, if you go out of your way, we, we, we use the bitter truth, which I, I like a lot more. It's less sweet. Okay. Oh yeah, and it's just like a, packaging nerds, look at that gorgeous label work. <laughs> like I loves it. Oh right. Uh, now we have one ounce. We're, we're back to the same rums. Uh, one one one, right? Light Puerto Rican rum. That's going to be your Bacardi. Yeah, or or Don. Or Don. Or, Q. Both of them are Puerto Don Rican. Q's better. Uh, Bacardi's where you'll find it everywhere. True. Uh, one ounce dark Jamaican. That is our Hamilton Pasto Black. Or Myers, if you can't get that. And one ounce of Demerara rum. And El Dorado is what we've got today, but Hamilton also makes that for us. Yes. Uh, I would like some humans, please. So, so in this case, I don't know. Yeah, we fine. Okay. Um, it is a shake vigorously with ice cubes. So in this case, so we, normally we are not going to be diluting it as much because the ice cubes are larger. Um, but uh, in this case, we're negated for. Oh, so you use uh, popcorn. Yep. Now, if you want to have fun, look into the surface area versus melt ratios of ice uh, for cocktails. You will never drink the same again, and you'll get developed strange opinions about ice and whatever. 
Right. Clarity, hopefully not. And we are using our Trader Vic's Mai Tai glasses. Our classic Mai Tai glasses and our Atlanta at, uh, Trader Vic's Mai Tai. You'll see them at Trader Vic's. This is a gated pour, so you use a horn strainer. If you ever wonder what this weird wire pain in the neck to clean is, it's a horn strainer. And we've, we've, we've also got a really good shaker here, but uh, so I didn't need to do this. However, we're going to because it's still worth it. And it's a gated pour. All right, now we're up with pebble ice, please. Yep. And then we're going to talk about our garnish. But Cliff, how are we going to garnish this thing? Well, we, we sure don't have an ice cone. We have an ice it cone. It doesn't look anything like an ice cone right now. And also, Vic's bars weren't as likely to be set up in a way that could have an assembly line of dudes back mm. there making ice garnishes. What are we to do? Well, gosh, what I have here is a stick of rat candy. As you will also see at Trader Vic's today, uh, they, they will use a white one. But I we should like have the bought. The I should have bought, bought white, but we prefer the taste of this the. This is uh, good stuff. So uh, there are a few theories about why he chose this. Uh, it might look a little bit like your your ice cone because it's crystalline and well. So there you go. What he told people <laughs> was that you could drink to taste, so even the ladies could like. <laughs> All right. So um, we know that. Uh, we have a crystalline sugar stick. It looks a little bit like an ice cone to me. What do you think? Uh, I well, I mean, obviously this is the amber, not the gold. But you know, let's see. Yeah, you, put it next to each other. You know, yeah. garnish wise on a menu, I, it glistens. It's sparkly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's see if it tastes uh, anywhere near what the the navy grog would taste like. Close. Well, yeah. It. it it's not the same thing for sure, um, no. but uh, I, I think that uh, Trader Vic probably uses a sweeter pimento jam. I think he, he would use something like same for this. Yep. Um, but hello, we have our sweetener as time goes by. I'm also going to note the uh, even though uh, pebble ice and not a slightly larger ice for crushed, mm -hmm. this is definitely standing up better with the cone. Mm -hmm. Like it is standing up more like a, uh, a whiskey old fashioned or something with a big block, uh, block of ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's a, a, a very solid a of ice that's yeah. going to melt slowly and not delete your drink out quite, quite so fast. Whereas all, all, all the pebble ice and stuff is going to continue to add water over time. Uh, which is why I stopped the drink. It's just a taste right now. It's like Or which deletes it down real fast. <laughs> All right. All right. So here we go with uh, a trip. So Jeff, Jeff's, uh, I, I have it. I believe I've heard that uh, the grog is his favorite drink. And uh, so the his, his tribute riff, whatever, uh, is 1994's Ancient Manor. I'm going to step up because I know you want to get over here and show some uh, uh no. oh, yeah just just in a second though oh, just a second. we're, we're going to get our, our, our drink building first ah. okay so uh here with uh three quarters of an ounce of lime juice half an ounce of white grapefruit juice half an ounce of simple syrup um in this case we have a dark sim nope uh, this is the uh, pimento jam oh yes uh we're two Error. Oh, that's uh, right. We got I, I poured the pimento dram into the simple syrup. So here we have half an ounce of simple syrup and one quarter ounce of pimento dram or allspice. Okay. And uh, one ounce of Jamaican rum. Hamilton, good stuff. We're just using this. Thank you, Ed. Love them. <laughs> one ounce of Demerara. A lot of good stuff. All right. Now we're going to shake a little bit. We're gonna shake well with whatever 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 we got. We can make some more ice. I think we're we're gonna it's gonna be great. All right. This is why our loaded dragon takes hours and a, an extra like luggage cart because you got to bring all the equipment as well. <laughs> all right. In this case, we're going to keep it in the drink. Um, this is a, a dirty pour. Uh, it's already added some dilution and it's going to continue as time goes on. Uh, 
and uh, the recipe does call for double attraction. That's pretty lovely interview that last year. It really is a minus weekend. Throw the cone in. We've admitted that this is our favorite way to drink this drink. Incorrectly? <laughs> yes. Wow, that's a little that girl. That one's not going to fit. All right. Let's try the next one. That's a smart. All righty. This is a swizzle from Jeff Barrett's Latitude 29 in New Orleans. It's hot. It's hot. Right. So here we go with some garnish. So we need a mint sprig. Get out of your way. All right. Uh, and a scored lime wire. So I'm going to score this. I'm sure this There's happy little holes here that are very sharp for scoring. Uh, the channel knife is for making a really long strip of peel. But in this case, we go all the way around. All right, and then Ends towards the poles, uh, and then opposite green the spot that's left here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It really hurts when you hit your finger with knife. Yeah, I try not to do that so far, and keeping my fingertips intact. All right, that is a poorly scored line. So we're gonna. All right. So cut that guy in half. This is a good time, now that it's in half, to add a little cut so that it can rest on a glass. And continue to cut it into what is ultimately wedges uh, that are eighths of the line. Here's one. And it doesn't fit. Unfortunately, you've got eight of them. All right, so that one is looking good. I can swap it out. All right, and some mint. Ah. We love mint. We do love mint. There's a big mint sprig. Uh, it is cheaper just to buy the whole plant. <laughs> Usually not, but these it are is. strange times. It's a, it's a weird time. All right, we want to express the mint. It lets the smell out. Bad mint. Spank that naughty mint. All right. So that is a lovely smell. We should get a little more in there. All right. Here we go. Is our the Ancient Mariner from Jeff Berry. A tribute recipe among Hundreds of tribute recipes to to the drugs. Cheers. Is it's not just so. Oh man! So that that uh, raises in me a uh, conundrum. The original grog. That's not good for me. No, no, no. Oh, here we go. Hey, oh no, melt water. No, I'm good. You, I'm good. You don't want to kill it off. I'm good. I mean, I, th that would be that's alcohol abuse, right? Your health. Yeah. Okay, melt water. We don't have. To oh no, that's <laughs> so bad. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm ready to go splice the main. Oh, Hey, yours are over there. Okay. Splicing the main brace. So they would give extra rations of rum for people that jobs, right? Splicing the main brace is 
you've broken the mast and you've got to put the mast back at her. It's kind of uh, It sucks, it's dangerous, and if you do it right, they'll give you twice the rum ration. <laughs> this became a synonym for uh, stand in line and get your rum ration for the day. Spice, spice my name brace. All right. All right. So our, our second one, this is our uh, Don's Own Grog from 1937. Okay, Don's Own Grog. Mm -hmm. How did it hold up? Well, it got watery or watery or yeah, the ice to treat it well. And I gotta, I'm not, I'm not loving the nutmeg between my teeth. Oh bummer. <laughs> okay, um, and and th this is kind of a mild flavor as they all go. Yeah, and name it a bias. Uh, the blackberry is nice. It's coming through. The blackberry is really nice. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to like the blackberry as much as I do. I'm a big uh, spice forward uh, mai tai drink style guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. I, I, I've got to go with with uh, the ancient mariner and then the uh, oh that that's your order. Here we have our Don's, which is the name we, we know and love. Yeah, I think it's mine. Good choice. It is, yeah. <laughs> but if it's, love if it's straight up Negro time, then then Don's. This if I make them at home, it Don's. I do love a like. Against the rest of their menu, I find Alana is a little sweet. Mm -hmm. So I love their drink compared to the rest of their menu. Okay. And and, and who doesn't like, you know, they're, they're sweetened over time as we let it sit and the sugar is in there. And they're candy. Nice. But this has gotten sweeter. It has, yeah, it has improved. Uh, it's yeah. not as sweet as what they they hand you at the, the restaurant. And yeah. we're not going to cast any shade. So, so that is, it's a fine drink. It's not as good as uh, as Don's version. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> like most, uh, if not all, Don's are are closed. I, 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 I heard it. I thought it was. I thought there might be one left. I thought so. I was on the Big Island of Hawaii. So we're talking. Uh, Trader Mix. Uh, they've got Emeryville and Atlanta uh, full time. They've got uh, Phoenix Airport. They got Phoenix Airport. I think it's Phoenix. They have a pop up in the airport. And this summer, they did a full installation just for the summertime. That's a more decorated out version. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea where it is, but the internet will tell you. So, okay. uh, so, uh, and and our final drink here. And 1994. Thank you, Jeff Barry. It's different because of that pimento dram. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it really um, is. So, uh, consequently, I like it a lot more. So, both very fine drinks. So I can see that uh, they are the, the loveliest. Uh, These are the two to go home to make. <laughs> yep. My, my, I to splurge. Add your ice code. Just have enough pebble ice uh, on hand. Yeah. No, because <laughs> the public is going to dilute. Okay, well, if I find yourself the right Pilsner glass, make make a nice cone. I, I'll I'll just uh, yield <laughs> to this argument. Fair enough. I think that's for us, y'all. Oh no, come uh, come come to the old history track at Dragon Con. Yes, welcome to Dragon Con. Uh, and you know you'll probably see uh, at least one of us, possibly both of us, kicking around, uh, possibly even volunteering or on your favorite panels. Mm -hmm. uh, And, uh, in Uhele every year, which um, is Atlanta's Tiki Weekend, yes, I, and the Atlanta Tiki Home Bar Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, the Home Bar Tour is coming up this month, so it's already sold out. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and of course, so we're not in the right time frame anyway. <laughs> but however, uh, the next is next January 2023 at Sheraton Atlanta, and we'd love which, to see you there. Which coincidentally is where the old history track is based. And uh, you know, uh, as much as I love my Marriott carpet. I also love my. Uh, <laughs> I love the Sheraton carpet. I love the Sheraton carpet as well. It, it's a special, unique pattern. Uh, Indeed, that, that might be available on Spoonfly or somewhere. One. Oh, wow. Mm, no, I don't know anything. <laughs> okay, Liz, <laughs> would you like to come say anything? Say a few. Say anything. a few words, Liz. 
Okay, guys, thank y'all for joining us. And don't forget, you can see more of our programming on the DragonCon app. You can also join these two lovely gentlemen at NUALA. So if you want to join us at NUALA, go to AtlantaTikiTour.com. Awesome. And don't forget, you need drinkware. So pick up your mugs at Har and Clay. Thanks. Have a good night.